Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to take a couple minutes to set up here and I want to welcome you all. Welcome everybody to the medicine wheel. I'm going to take a couple. Hey, hi, Sonia. I'm going to say this. If you're on here and um, you're able, I invite you to turn on your camera. So that way. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Baran. Welcome. Sonia, welcome. Yeah, it's great. It feels great. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Now I feel like I'm, I'm talking to you guys. It definitely awakens me and brings me more uh, to my full attention. So whenever everyone else is ready, if you can turn on your cameras, welcome. It's about all of us being together in one space in one moment. So it is so good to see you guys. <laughs> welcome. Hey, Carol, it's good to see you again. I'm going to take a moment. Let's just drop into meditation and give a couple more minutes, moments for people to uh, get to the cameras, turn on the cameras. And then when uh, we start, I'll start with opening sacred space. But in the meantime, I invite you to close your eyes and bring your attention inward. And as you bring your attention inward, notice where you have arrived. What is the space that you found yourself in? This is your environment, your inner environment, your environment. And uh, I just invite you to enter with reverence. And if you've entered and you feel that there's, you've walked into a place that there's some worry, Open your heart to that worry and say, it's okay. I'm, I am connected with the divine. All worry can be surrendered to the divine. If you've w walked into the space and you found some anger, say, it's okay. I can forgive. I'm connected with the divine and I can forgive. Notice what might be up and include it because that is what you're feeling. And it's okay to be feeling that. And at the same time, as you accept it, you can also dissolve it from being something that takes up too much space in your reality. Nice. Inhale and invite your hands to your heart. Bow your chin to your heart. With your eyes inward, feel that you're looking down into your heart and say, my dear beloved heart, I have returned. I've struggled for decades to find out what meditation is and it is the most simple thing it's like my dear heart i have returned i'm returning back to the center of myself where nothing is happening that part of ourselves has never gotten traumatized triggered hurt it's always just that pure light sure we've created shells around it but that part of this, because of the shells, because of the ways we acted, it's still innate. It's still whole, rather. Let's bow to that. And I invite you to, if you wish to, only if you wish to, to bow to any god or goddess, saint or avatar or archetype. I, I bow to St. Francis, who has been with me for several decades. And I, I bow to Francisco, my beloved Don Francisco teacher from... Peru. Uh, but on the spirit world, yeah, about St. Francis and to Hanuman, the monkey god of, the, of Hindu mythology. And gently inhale and lift your chin, open your eyes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <sighs> I see more names. I invite, you to, I invite you all to come in with more cameras. Hey, welcome. Purina, welcome Meryl, welcome Diane. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Shelly, welcome. Thank you all for being here. Uh, yeah, it feels really nice on this side. I, I like we, you know, my, my beloved 
uh, wife and I teach and we, we both have like 20 years of teaching. We've taught to thousands of people. So we were saying the other day, it's like we're here, we're teaching yoga classes or Tai Chi and there's sometimes it's just this gray wall of names and it's like, are we alone or are we teaching with someone? <laughs> and we I'm laughing because I feel it does just like kind of like it does take some mastery to be able to do that without being totally intimidated. Another intimidated, but it's just like, is, are we still connected with the internet or do we think we're teaching a class and no one's there? Uh, which, which that could be fine too. Uh, that's what we do. We do yoga, tai chi, we do our martial arts, we do our shamanic practices, and that's what we do alone here in the jungle. It is nice to share it with others. Uh, I will open sacred space and I will speak to those of you who maybe are joining us for the first time. This is the fourth master class in preparation and in, uh, uh, in light of uh, the medicine wheel training that will be starting March 15th and is 12 weeks, 12 Thursdays, if I remember correct. Definitely check that. I'm not sure. Um, but let's open sacred space and say this, that in this open and sacred space, these four specific sessions that we did, uh, you'll see in the opening of sacred space. We, in our first session, we did the south and we talked about the serpent and the qualities it teaches us. In the second session, we did the west and the otorongo, the jaguar and the qualities the jaguar teaches us. Then we did the north and hummingbird, the sweetness that the hummingbird can bring to us. And today we're closing literally the circle of the Chakana, the Inca medicine wheel, which is this symbol over here. And the idea is for all of us, once we've gone all the way around, to find ourselves in the center. So today we're doing the east and condor. And when we, the idea is to get a, a, a little bit of a taste, both for how I teach and what it is that I'm teaching. Um, and then when we go into the study itself, we will have the shamans coming from Peru. Uh, they will be with us on online for at least four of the sessions in those 12 weeks. Yeah, yeah, I am so happy. And I'm really, really happy. I'm like, I don't know if you can tell the smile is they're coming tomorrow. They're arriving here in Costa Rica. And this week we have a week long, um, a week long retreat with them. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I'll take that heart and I'll send it to them. Uh, so with that said, just notice a little bit as I open sacred space, just um, allow the words to be filtered in your heart, let your heart catch them. So you can close your eyes and bring your attention inward, or you can look for the south and uh, follow the directions as I call them out. To the winds of the south. Great Amaru, great serpent, be here with us. Teach us how to shed our skin and let go of the past. Allow us to let go of previous trauma. Teach us how to let go of previous trauma and previous impressions so we can move along for a new life, so we can feel more grounded like you feel, belly to belly with Mother Earth. Horpichai, turning to the west. Hampu Otorongo, West, Otorongo, Great Jaguar, be here with us. Pace around us, allow your heartbeat to echo in our heartbeat, so we too can feel courageous like you are, so we can change our mind, so we can begin to think with no fear. Be here and lead us through the way of sweetness and softness and uh, that that you hold in your paws, and lead us and remind us that we are all powerful, that power that you hold in your claws. Chai. The winds of the north, Colimbri, Dulce Colimbri, come with us, come. Teach us how to fly back and go and heal anything of the past. Teach us how to collect the nectar and the sweetness of life. And thank you, beloved hummingbird, that you're connecting us with the ancestors, the ancestors of so many beautiful transitions, so many beautiful lineages and beautiful ways of being. The Caro nations, shamans of Peru, the Chinese shamans, the Taoists, and the amazing sages of yoga of India. Be here, connect us. Parkitai. The winds of the east, great condor, we 
fly with you today. Teach us how to rise above and see the greater picture. We are blessed to have so many of you condors here in our area and watch your beautiful flight. Teach us how to fly with that elegance, how to find the thermals in our life, what can carry us through difficult moments. And remind us that we're always connected with the divine, just like you are always flying wing to wing with the great spirit. Thank you for your beautiful quality of understanding, of seeing the greater picture. Horkitai. And feeling the earth under you, now that we've stepped in the center of the medicine wheel, feel the earth under you. Santa Terra Pachamama Dulce Mamita. Thank you, sweet Mother Earth, for everything. You are everything. From you we come, from we you we eat, from you to you we return. All of life is you, Mother Earth. And we appreciate you and we hope that we're a wave of people awakening so we can start healing and healing you and undoing the damage we have done to you. Thank you for keep on always forgiving us. Horkichai. Ainti Taita, Mama Kiya, Father Sun, Grandmother Moon. Thank you, Father Sun, for your beautiful light. May we begin to all see clearly as daylight. And thank you for sending your flame so we can burn old contracts and old ways of being. And beloved Grandmother Moon, thank you for the unconditional love. Thank you for the sweet feminine energy, for reminding us the sweetness of the girl, the beauty of the woman, the wisdom of the grandmother. Horpichai. All right. So welcome once again. I love the uh, jaguars that are present here. <laughs> Shelly, that's a really sweet jaguar. I can hear her purring. Uh, I don't know, uh, you can wave your hand. I've, I've started this uh, new, um, I think it's going to turn out to be a podcast. I'm not sure. This new thing I've been doing in, uh, on Monday nights. Is everyone able to, does everyone know about it? Monday nights. So it's, uh, it's open, it's free, no registration. Monday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, on uh, YouTube and Facebook Live. It's called the Ignite Your Wild. And it is a result of 20 years of working in the shamanic work, 15 years, 16, working with the shamans and deep in the jungles of Peru. And, uh, and now, especially, I want to say it's the combination of all those things, but really what brought, brought this home, this Ignite Your Wild, was the fact that I've been living here the last two years uh, and, and three days <laughs> in the jungle of Peru. And we've had the chance to be really in deep connection with a lot of animals. And I've had the opportunity and I have had an awakening uh, for my love and appreciation for the animals and the respect that the, um, the elders teach us to have and the lessons we can learn. So I've come even a step beyond that because for 15 years I've been teaching out of Kupalu, uh, wherever all these centers and places like, but now I feel that it's, it's not even about that. It's just about the animals. What even if we weren't shamans? What even if we were not the American Indians? What even just to pause and look at the animals. And so Ignite Your Wild is something that is just began. It's three. It was just did the third Monday. Uh, but it's something that I'm making and I'm making with everyone that's connecting, everyone that's there. I'm open to ideas. And I'll just say this, and, and, and I'm saying this because it's really connected. We're going to be talking about condor, and there's a lot of condors here, or there's a lot of vultures here that are the same uh, family. Um, so the idea of Ignite Your Wild is, is now beginning to unfold as such. First of all, it's about rewilding nature. Uh, and I'll say that. Reagan, when Reagan was president, he came to the that time president of Costa Rica and he said, if you put cow pastures and give us a lot of cows, we'll buy all the cows for beef. We need it for our burgers. So they went and proceeded and did that. And they did that for three years. They kept on cutting. I don't know for how long they kept on cutting. But after Reagan uh, left, the next, uh, and I don't even remember who was who, but the next, uh, the next government said, no, Costa Rica, we don't need your beef. We have our own. We're, we're getting it in El Salvador and Nicaragua. So they did this in several countries. And what they did was they cut down jungles. And so now I, I've, had my, I've had my share of burgers so now I want to pay back, right? I'm not coming to a place, I'm a saint, I'm not a saint. I've had my burgers and they realize what I have done. 
and I, I, and I want to now pay back. So what Ignite Your Wild is about is that we're trying to, and we are, we're buying land that has been used for cattle, and we're not buying it to build our, our, our gringo villas on it. We're buying them to rewild them. So parts of them are going to be rewild, be like jungle straight up. That's going to be connecting with the other parts of jungle. And some of it is going to be what my hope is, and I'm, I'm already talking with some people here, is farming as it should be done. That is rotating. And, and the idea is to bring in people that will train all the locals. And so we'll give plots of lands to the locals and they can do their own farming. They can have their own food. And then we can give back the, the land that we took uh, so we can pay and have that in place. Uh, the other part of Ignite Your Wild is something that that too is awakening inside me. I'm, I'm getting a little bit wilder and wilder. More and more we find Nina and myself, we find ourselves purring when we're hanging out. It's just like, oh, it feels so good today, I'm purring. It's just like, and then sometimes Nina's saying something and I'm like, like especially when we're having these, these conversations because we're so deep into it, both of us, it's just like what we love the most. When Nina has an idea, I can't wait to add on. And she's like, you're like a dog. Like I'm holding the, the tennis ball and you're waiting to, to get it. And, and it's so true. So we're more wagging our tails, more, more purring. And that, there's a realization with that. Did I not? I was not. Maybe we are not. Maybe. Food for thought. Maybe it was only about me. But maybe we have disconnected with this, with our true nature. Because I had realized we disconnected with nature because we've created the cities and created our air conditioning, the heating systems. The, so we, we have our own environment. We kind of like our cocooned in. But the thing is that I, I feel that as a result of that, we have disengaged from our own nature. And our own nature is mammalian. And we've like been a little bit put in a box and, and we like the box. It feels safer, like, you know, but also, so I'm feeling that this Ignite Your Wild can be are there emotions you want to feel into? Can you be happier? Can you play more? Can you express yourself? Do you hear the monkeys in the back? So the idea is that, and it has been the, the, the there's, okay, we got it, Mr. Monkey. Uh, I have been inspired because I heard this story and I'll bring it home. And again, this is all one, uh, what we're talking about today. And this on Mondays is the same thing. 1995, uh, some people created a really nice project and they released 32 gray wolves back in Yellowstone Park. And I don't know if you know this story, Google it and YouTube it. It's just amazing. I keep on YouTubing and finding more and more. It's like, not only did the wolves come back, yeah, they brought them back. But after a year or two years, some flowers started coming back. And afterwards, the, the mountain lions came back. And afterwards, the more bison came back. And frogs and fish and butterfly. And the rivers started changing their course. And there's this whole thing that happened as a result because the wolf was back. And when you bring back the top predator, the top predator isn't there to kill and just eat everyone up. No, that's only us. Other animals as top predators, what they do is they keep everything in check. They keep the healthy ones living, they clean out if there's someone that is not healthy. And also it seems like what they did at Yellowstone Park is that now they were checking the population of deer, which was overflowing, was eating everything in the valleys. The deer started not eating in the open valleys, they'd go in the woods. So the open valleys could bring brought more flowers, more flowers brought back more bees and more mosquitoes. So you have like Basically, the top and bottom, uh, the top predator and the bottom, what is it, prey, are the ones that keep everything else in check and keep the environment. They keep the keep us in, a, in a, an environment that is alive, and uh, that's what ignite your your wild is. Is like, can you be a little more wilder, more fun? Can you be more spontaneous? Can you be more real? And in all that, I want to say also, it's like because. It used to be it's like, don't behave like an animal, or at least it was a Greek expression. Uh, it's like, let's start behaving like animals because, because they are the only ones that take care of their environment. Every animal, with each action that it does, it regenerates what is happening around it. By the way, it sheds its fur. By the way, where it choo chooses to lead its feces. By, it's spreading, spreading seeds, making more, more this, more that. It always, everything every animal does, 
fits in into this to us invisible puzzle of a cosmos that works in in oneness and it's called one life and if we lose the animals we are lost we are lost we are lost we are lost it's like we may not see it but at least our environmentalists and scientists see it and know it and they're, they're now they're like ringing all bells so it's time to bring back more forests and it's time to for us i feel um you know and you know what i feel it's just more be to be more yourself can you be more yourself have you ever felt that you can't be yourself because of the work environment because of the neighbors because of the church because of the family because in thanksgiving you don't want to mention anything at the table because 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 why have we allowed uh, this bureaucracy of hypocrisy to take over and why do we need to abide by etiquette why while, while we could abide by moral and sweetness right so just food for thought um and i don't know if you can feel that but i'm ignited i am super ignited i'm super ignited because uh we just were able to buy 15 acres where i'm at right now and the project is absolutely alive uh and it's happening again I want to share it for people, for, for everyone, with everyone, for your heart. And what is it? And I'm also interested in hearing, it's like hearing ideas. It's like, what can we, what can we do, right? Because it takes the we, it takes the we. It took us to, it took us, because again, like I said, I've had my fair share of burgers. So I'm pretty sure that, am I still here? Can you guys hear? There's a little bit of a light show. It's, it's the karma for the burgers I ate. <laughs> so I'm sorry for the burgers I ate. I, if anything, I can't give the cow's life back, but I can give all the other animals the jungle that I took away from them back. Right? And, and in all this, someone commented in last Monday, and he said, you know, if there wasn't for subsidies that the $1.90 burger we eat, each burger actually would cost $37.80. $37.80 each burger. That's the value, the monetary value from burning, taking down forests to getting it all the way to our table or to wherever it is, McDonald's or, or what have you. Um, so it's time to just bring it back and, and give the farm and also do farming. It's just like, I think there's like, I feel we're really lucky that we kind, kind of like decided to stay here. I mean, it was a very conscious decision because we love Costa Rica. We'd, we'd be coming here for years, but staying has changed us because, um, because of the environment and the environment has changed us. And I feel that what's coming up is gratitude. And I'm going to go into Condor. and just feel how you can ignite the condor inside you. So our beloved teachers, the Karo people, teach us that the condor is a great teacher and t teaches us how to rise above, how to rise above, and from there see the greater picture of our life, they say. And it also teaches us how to do that. So there's times, I don't know if you felt down or someone said something and you felt hurt or angry or upset or confused. But he teaches us how to catch the thermals. If you watch the condors, condors rarely to not at all flap their wings. They live in high altitude, they live on cliffs, and they basically just jump off the cliff and, and spread their wings. And then they catch, and then you watch them, they spiral up because they're catching thermals. And what is a thermal, right? It's high, it's, it's hot air, hotter air rising up. But hot air and, and something that's rising upward is also evolution. And something that's unseen, just like the hot air, is spirit. So it, they invite us to start looking into our spirituality. Do, can we feel spiritual inside our heart enough to be able to rise above? So for me, this, this work and what you'll be hearing me talk about through the 12 weeks of, of that training, of the medicine wheel training, 
is these connections that I've made, like as a Western man and, and studied and as a skeptic. So, so where is that spirituality really? And especially that, that's such a big subject. I mean, teaching out of Kripalu Center for Yoga and Health for 15 years uh, and, and roaming the world to take workshops in my 20s and my 30s to, to try to even figure out what does it mean to be spiritual? What does even that mean? Why, why was it awesome during the weekend? And um, and so difficult, so difficult during the uh, during Monday. You know what I mean? Have you ever had that experience where you have this awesome experience through the whole weekend, and through it's all really, really cool, and in the, at the workshop, and then Monday you just crash it back in your mundane life. I felt I've had felt that over and over and over again, and the essence here is that. What has been, what's happened is that we move, we have, everyone moved upstairs. We, we didn't understand, the, 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 we didn't get the information right. We didn't get the directions right. So instead of moving upward with our heart to God or to the sky, to the spirit, in any name you want to call it, we all moved upstairs to our head and we're thinking. And that really makes things complicated because our thinking isn't... Um, it's not, it's, not a, it's not what we think it is. We think it's an analyzer. It's not. It's just a tape recorder. And it kind of takes back and forth ideas. So we don't, we don't actually think. We just have internal conversations ourself with ourself. Or usually our traumatized self with our fearful self. Our angry self with our what am I going to do now self. The thinking isn't what we think. It's not some kind of like, oh, I've got this idea. I'm going to process in five ba minutes. I'm going to be back with these awesome results. Have you ever had that happen? <laughs> or have you found yourself like I have, like trying to think about something about even my, my divorce and it took me 10 years later, I'm still was thinking about it. There's no resolution that actually comes. There's no printout. So the idea that the condor presents to us is that get out of our mind and rise even further up and the thermals are about beginning to like see that and seen and the seen is the spirit and the spirit resides in all religions and all all these spiritual paths it's in the heart it's right here and where i bring in that western part is that harvard medical comes about 12 years 14 years ago and says we have discovered something new about the heart that is awesome They discovered because now we have these timers that we can count time with up to eight digits or ten digits, nanoseconds, that the heartbeat is not always the same. It's not boom, 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 boom. It differs. The space in between each heartbeat differs. And they name that heart rate variability. And I'm like, wait a minute. When Patanjali in the Yoga Sutra says it's in the heart, the wise one resides in the heart, this is what he's talking about. And what am I talking about and why I'm bringing this up? Because if you pause and if you don't mind your mind, and if you're like in a conversation or in a situation and you're not analyzing it, because when you're analyzing it, you're not really seeing what's happening. You're only comparing it to other things that happened in the past. Right? When, when we're analyzing a situation, we're not more fully present in the situation. Quite the opposite. We're trying to find the archives from the past and say, well, I knew another person that said that and did that. And when, what happened when they did that? And what did I do then? And, what, and so you're really, <laughs> when you're thinking, you're really absent minded. You're absent present. You're not present anymore. And, 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 and I know this can be a little bit mind-boggling it is it's like how do I feel so I'm giving you this idea that the heart rate variability I'm going to say two things about that and that's what the condor practice is Harvard Medical also told us that 60% of the cells of the heart are neuron cells neuron cells are brain cells they're brain processors so we think we actually think here. 60% of the cells are for us to think. So how, do, how am I feeling about this that's happening right now? Right? 
And where is that? Where is it to just bring it home? It's just like, so the heart is the, the heart is the, that's why Christ, Buddha, everyone's talking about love and, and the heart. And it's not about, you know, a romantic song. It's about this organ and its ability and its gifts and its mis and non-use. We've just put it aside and it's just like everyone, no one's using it. Like we've been instructed by so many beautiful teachers. But here I'm, you, I'm inviting you to use that as intelligence. And that unseen force that can help you lift and rise above a situation is in that HRV. Because when you're feeling a situation, you're reading it. Something, this person is telling me something that might not be true right now. I feel it. Uh, this, how do, this is how, uh, also this is like to bring it down to the sense of it. This is how lie detectors work. We change, our HRV changes. If I say a lie, my HRV will change. Truth of the matter is that when someone else is lying, my HRV will change and I'll feel it. Right? Have you ever tried it? Even if you try to say it, it's like, well, yeah, I really like your food, mom. You know, even this is about a sweet lie, right? And it's like, I really like your food, mom. And your, the body is always going to do, I'm going to be shaking, scratching my head or changing my position to cover up that that is not true. There's, they're talking about seeing. This weekend we're going to the Jaguar path. We're talking about seeing. And I go down in all the paths, the ways of what we actually see. Because when I was talking with the masters in the jungle, it's like I, taught, I said, teach me how to see energy. It's like, they basically told me, well, open your eyes. <laughs> it's just like, it's in front of you. And the, the actual words my beloved Don Manuel used is like, do not dismiss the apparent. Because that's what happens to us. We're like in conversation and we keep on dismissing the apparent because we're thinking of the past. We're trying to remember. Then we have this reaction in us, but we don't know how to handle it. And we don't want to be out of place and out of etiquette. And then for a week, we're thinking, I should have said that. I should have done that. Is, it, is that only me? Let me see hands. Has anyone ever been in that situation? Just so I know. Maybe it's only me. I like I have to work a lot on myself. Okay. I still, I do have to work a lot. <laughs> but that's what we're here for. We're all here to work on ourselves. So begin to trust your heart. And then if you're doubting something, just kind of like drop in, not into thinking, kind of like do this. Open up. Open your collarbones a little bit and just let your heart tell you because these differences, the HRV as it changes, it's sending a code. Listen to this because this is this is like it took me years to get to this through Chinese medicine, through shamans, through everything. But that difference in that beat, the age, the heart rate variability is clapping a little drum beat, speaking to the pituitary gland, who is the governor of all glands and the ma maestro of the orchestra who then tells, tells all the other glands what hormones to secrete. So now I feel frustrated, now I feel angry, now I feel confused. What's in my blood right now as a result of what this person said or did? So hold all that, because in the meantime, there's great news the condor brings us. I don't have to do any of all that. The moment I feel my HRV saying there is something here that's out of balance, what we call in Quechua, Aini, there's a beautiful word, Quechua word, right, that from the Caros nations people of Peru. It's called Aini, in correct relationship to Aini. Everything always needs to be in Aini. We need to thank Mother Earth. Every time we eat something, say thank you. Every time we eat an animal, say thank you. Every time we drink water, say thank you. Uh, I, I, Aini is a correct relationship and is also reciprocity. It's like I always will help my neighbor. If anyone I need see that needs help, I'll stop and help. So we're in correct relationship to everything in life. So if you're in a situation where you're feeling your heart saying there's something off here, this person is making me feel this or making me feel that, that is, this is just a moment. This is just a moment right here that is really important. And if you happen to be here today accidentally, this can be a gift that can change your life. I can guarantee this to you. No one can make you or should be able to make you feel this or that or the other. You should always be the condor, the king, the goddess, the queen, everything you are, that to rise above and to be able to rise. So if someone's stooping low and trying to cut you down, it is their 
place of stepping out of Aini. So Kondra says, rise. And the moment I'm feeling this, my heart beats like, wait a minute, I'm being insulted right now? <laughs> it's just like, maybe it's just sometimes, because there's a, sometimes we have interactions with narcissists, or sometimes we have people that are antagonistic, or, you know, there's always maybe that person, that aunt or uncle, that every Thanksgiving, they're going to be dropping that comment that's just a, it's, I don't know how they do it, it's a talent. They're almost like, they're pretending they're giving you a, uh, uh, a compliment and they're really undercutting you. There's three things that are bad about you at the same time. Anyone have any experience like that? Let me see hands. I need to know that I'm not just, I don't want to be projecting here, okay? <laughs> no, I'm an anthropologist at heart. So anthropos, human, uh, coming from uh, the Greek word anthropos. But being Greek, myself, and talking about the Greek, Greek word anthropos, which means human, also comes from the, is the direct word anthropos, from the ancient Greek anthropo. Upward I look. Giving the power to human beings to be evolutionary beings. Giving the power to every human being to say, you can evolve, and that's your nature. You're going to be evolving. You're not going to be in elementary school anymore. You're going to be out of high school. You're going to be out of college. You're going to be a pro. You're going to be in all ways evolving because it is in our nature. So Condor, for me, the biggest gift Condor has given me, there are many in all this work that I have received and, and I'm sharing, um, as having with um, great, with absolute gratitude and humbleness, I received the highest initiation uh, of, of three initiations through the 15 years of working closely with these men and women. Family, they watched me raise my son. I watched them raise their kids. We are family. We're so, so beloved. I'm so happy they're coming in a couple of days. Uh, I have been, been initiated as a Karakaluik, which means a visionary, a seer. And an elder. I say, I'm, I'm, if it's okay, I'm a young elder. <laughs> uh, uh, and this has brought me into a place where I say, okay, well, what is that? What is that? They bring me so, I'm so humbled that they've given me this because I started as a Pampo Messiah, the, the valley. I was the Mesa carrier of the valley. And then I became an Alto Messiah. I went higher up in the Andes. And now I'm the visionary. I'm with Condor. So the biggest gift for me is that at some point through this, may it be the energetic shift from the initiations, may it be the endocrine shift. So when I say energetic, let me be specific. So we're not talking about something abstract. In these shifts of consciousness and, and these practices that I've done from fire ceremonies to rattling, to clearing out, to journeying, to cutting cords, to removing old traumas and burning them in the fire, etc. I feel that my endocrine system is what has become that seer, the visionary, right? So is it like all of a sudden because I did 20 years of yoga, the bills that don't come in don't make me panic or someone insulting me doesn't make me sad or, or confused? It does, but now <laughs> it does because it doesn't mean that everything's going to stop. You're going to, you know, even if you're enlightened, if you're Dalai Lama, you'll get a flat tire. The thing is, what are you going to do with it? So this is the teachings of the condor. You always rise above. The condor teaches you to spiral upward. It's just like, and every opportunity, which up to now felt like a red flag of someone being mean or someone demeaning you or someone this or someone, or a situation, a tire, flat tire. I burnt the food, dropped the glass, I broke the glass. It's like, it is an opportunity not to go back to surrender to the endocrine system and a pattern it's like oh i always get angry when i break guts or someone's i always cry when i break a glass so we all have our patterns but the idea of a condor is that when i'm triggered and i'm ready to cry because that's what usually i do huh? or when i'm triggered i'm ready to yell and scream and be really upset because that's what i usually do or when i'm confused because that's what i usually do Whatever it is, fill in the blank. What happens to you more often? And, and notice it because we covet it as a part of our personality and, and also equality. Both crying or all of the emotions are welcome, right? It's, there's a moment to be upset about something. There's a moment to be sad about something. There's a moment to be confused about something. Mr. Monkey does agree with me. But the idea, though, that we am bringing here, and this is what I felt watching myself, these are called holler monkeys. 
The idea is now this. And we, we talk constantly about all this with my wife and, and my son that is here. Um, when something happens like a conflict, I'm like, okay, 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 great, great, great. There's something happening. Awesome opportunity. Can I practice keeping my heart open and rising above? And it is absolutely, I don't know what to call it. It is just absolutely bliss. It's taken me years because this thought I've been entertaining for the last seven years. What do I prefer? Do I prefer to be upset or do I prefer to be remain in the center of my heart? And it took one of the many, many, many teachers that I've had that said, what, what, what are you, what was it? How did he say it? He said, it's like, you can either remain open as love or you can close down in your dysfunction. But the thing in the Western world, and I'm going to point it out, which is in the Western world, it's Europe and America only, which is the not on, the only reality that exists on the planet. But where it stands out most in Europe and America is that we then immediately say, you know why I'm angry? Because my ex-wife slammed the door 21 years ago. It's like, <laughs> she's an awesome person. We were 25, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm just going to hold on to this and hold on. And that's what we do. We hold on. And it's like holding on to the, the claws and the feather and wetting down the feathers of your condor. So you just... just... And, and I'll close. I don't want to get too geeky because I'm just going to close because of the importance that, that this is my mission to convey the reality of spirituality. Because it's a little bit far-fetched as a subject and hard to grasp. Because at the end, it all turns around and comes to what is most material, and it comes to your body. So, I got it. We'll bring the land back. So it comes back to the body. Our cells, when we eat food, the food is broken down to vitamins, minerals, a bunch of stuff. And that is carried through our blood, and then our cells eat. When I eat, all my cells of the body, like what's the three trillion cells, they all eat. But each cell has what is called the receptor. In order to eat, there's a specific opening where they receive. There's a receptor for vitamin C. There's a receptor for vitamin D. There's a receptor for uh, creatine. There's a receptor for chlorophyll. There's, a re there's millions of receptors. And there's tens of thousands of receptors on each one of the cells. Now, if I eat, drink Coke and eat burgers and do this every day for 20 years, my body has created more receptors for Coke and burgers and cheeseburgers because that's what it's gotten used to. So, okay, so let me get more receptors so I can create this. The receptors that are really major and important and our cells make quickly and, and sustain throughout are the receptors for hormones. So if I get angry three times a week, I have three times more cells for anger. So if I haven't eaten, what happens when you're not, when you don't eat? <laughs> Nina laughs at both me and my son, we get hangry. Yeah, exactly. I was like, where's the food? Why is the waiter late? <laughs> what is this place? <laughs> we start displacing, right? The, what we displace the, 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 uh, the responsibility outward. We outsource. Well, the responsibility is mine because if I knew it, I should have had something in my in my pocket to, to eat a little bit to keep my sugar levels. And also, when I'm not angry three times a week now because I've done so many yoga, sun salutations, or whatever it is, my body's saying, wait a minute, find a reason, find a reason. I'm looking for a reason to be angry. So all this, the condor takes us and says, no, rise up, rise up, rise up and feel the freedom and that's why when we rise up we're connected to that balanced endocrine system so we're once again with the divine we're in this divine place of of balance and sweetness we're flying wing to wing with a great spirit and that is our work and you know and it's been it's been the white man's mistake. We're not here to, to, to correct the world or teach anyone else anything. We're here to learn and we're here to grow and we're here to respect the others so we can all exchange. May that be with tribes, with cultures, may that be with animals, may it be with trees, may it be with birds. We're here to rejoice a beautiful, beautiful uh, 
paradise party celebration. So rise above, Condor. Um, I'll bring it home. Any questions? I'm going to open it just to see if you have any questions. Beloved Meryl, it's so good to see you. And I'm so happy. Please unmute yourself. Nice Go to ahead. see everybody. So when the elders are in the jungle, we're talking about sea. Can the sea also be smell as well? <laughs> I love your questions, Meryl. We do smell too. We are not like dogs who have 40 more times powerful power of scent than we do. Our, our most powerful scent is eyesight as human beings, and it's not anywhere close to most of the mammals anyway. But uh, we, when we're talking and discussing and when you're in a conversation, we don't know it because especially culturally, we haven't been taught this. We are smelling the other person. So we have the endocrine system that secretes the hormones inside and we have the exocrine system, which basically through our sweat and through the pores releases other, other hormones. Those hormones, if I know that I'm smelling the person or not, usually we don't. We hope we don't. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> right? Right. But without knowing it, we're collecting information that's triggering our endocrine system. I'm smelling the person. I can smell some hostility. People, I don't see their energy, but I can smell ego. And ego, pardon the expression, basically smells like shit to me. With some people, <laughs> all I could smell is that. And I'm like, oh, that's ego. I but love I that. Don't gonna... see, I don't see the aura. I just smell it. That, that's a good one. I love it. It sounds like the words of a holy man. <laughs> <laughs> holy woman. Tender, holy woman. I usually I get know. ego instead of condor if I'm going to get the winged ones. Can the ego eagles... smells from 10 miles away. <laughs> Right. Can they change shape according to what you need at that moment? Like turn into other winged ones to get what your message, their message across to you? Because I've I'm had sorry, hummingbirds. You... I've had hummingbirds show up right on my left shoulder in Arizona. I thought it was a big bug, and Dan tells me don't swat it, and it was a hummingbird sitting base, almost sitting right on my shoulder. So it's what almost like sweetness. eagle changes. It does. We and I get are... eagle too. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Our whole chemistry changes when we meet with animals. Okay. And, but it, and, almost right, like changes chemistry... what I need. Is it what, what you if need? I, maybe I need the hawk at that moment so the eagle energy will morph into hawk so I get the hawk message rather than the eagle message or I get the hummingbird message. Well, whatever comes is there. So don't, don't get stuck in the head about seeing if it works, if it was, it's like, whatever's there is that. So if hummingbird came, okay. it's bringing sweetness, it's bringing nectar, it's connecting you to the ancestors. Maybe that moment you were in this place in, in Arizona and there was like strong ancestor uh, energy. So it's okay. reminding. Okay. And, thank and you. always remember, thank you very much, Meryl, always for your questions. Okay, I'm going to take one more question and, and bring it home to a close because the monkeys are are booing me. <laughs> They're not, but they are getting a little bit. I think my voice is echo. We're really high up here, perched up in this thing, and and we're in the treetops. So, Mr. Alpha is like, "What are you doing here?" May I ask you a question? Hello. Please, Sonia. Yes. Hi. Nice to meet everyone. Good to meet you. Um, I. I walked the medicine wheel when I was in the UK. So I've been round the path once and I'm curious about walking it around again with you. Is, it, is there some more information that I can find on the course that you're about to offer? Yes, uh, if you go to, the, to our, our website, to find more information, if I understood you correctly. And I'm going to say you can do it because the medicine wheel itself, I'm, I'm looking for a second to find. But it's like a spiral, it. like you're saying, you can walk it many times, right? So. Yes. And was this the, you, did you do the medicine wheel with us? Remind me, I'm sorry, I'm not. No, right no, now. I, I didn't. So, um, I don't, so, so I'm, yeah. Uh, uh, so the medicine wheel is and i'm just finding the link so i can put it in the chat box so you can pick it up 
Thank you. I don't know if everyone has already walked it or is planning to do the journey, but it's a very powerful one. And uh, yeah. So well, here it is. I'll tell you what, the medicine wheel, depending on where you are and what uh, what lineage you're learning it from. So there's American medicine, the American Indian medicine wheel. It was there's Peruvian. My, mine, is, mine is Inca. Peruvian. Yeah. Who, who was your teacher? Uh, Emma, but you, oh, you may not know her. She w learned the four winds. So okay, with cool. a, a, with I don't know her. I don't know her. I do know Alberto Violdo and uh, and Marcella. They're dear friends, and actually, we've, we've yeah, we're here right outside uh, Blue Spirit here now. Um, join it because uh, what I think you're going to find is something very different. Uh, while I'm really much closer to the teachers, like literally always with them, uh, I'm also teaching just like I taught. This is not li exactly lineage, but what I've been given to do is the tasks. When I said, when Don Francisco said, go and start teaching, I was in my fifth year of studying with him. I said, I'm not ready. I'm white. I'm like, who am I? He said, how am I going to teach it? And he said, teach it in English. Yeah. So I'm teaching it in English. I'm teaching it because I went around my tail trying to get my tail forever. It's like, what does it mean to be spiritual? How can I be a powerful shaman? How can I be this? And I could never get it, right? Now I have it. And I, and I know it's innate in every one of us. I know I do not have one single gram of power more than any one of you guys on the screen right now. I know we're all the same. And it's just a matter of how do we change my view? How do we, can I rise into condor and begin to see things differently? Uh, and, and I want to share this gift. So you'll hear some things you know, but I think it's going to expand the knowledge. It's going to make you understand more what you heard and, and find it more it's like how can it be applicable for you rather than a traditional knowledge about the tradition how is it how can you be in the center of the medicine wheel how do you act live life and and it is life-changing mm. you know, all, all people the jaguar path trainings all trainings all hands up that's what we hear and i know it we see it we witness it. <laughs> yeah well they say um the best way to learn is to teach and i'm very glad you're sharing your knowledge with us thank you i appreciate you Thank you, Sonia. Look it up. Our email is evolve at jaguarpath.com. Evolve at jaguarpath.com. If you have any questions, please send them. And again, I'll be back live Monday on Facebook and YouTube on Ignite Your Wild. I am open to hearing ideas, suggestions, uh, especially with Igniting Your Wild. Uh, any people that have expertise, anyone that you know or you may have something to share, how can we rewild? How can we regenerate our our planet and wildlife please let's all jump on board and do this now thank you all for being here just for a minute bring your attention in i thank the serpent for being such a great teacher of being grounded and real in life i thank the jaguar for lending me that way of thinking without fear the hummingbird for allowing me to present my sweetness without being shy the condor today for allowing us to learn how to rise above. Grateful to Mother Earth because she is all we come from, we are sustained from, and we return to. Grateful to Father Son for the light and the photosynthesis, the prana. Grateful to Grandmother Moon for the sweetness, the storytelling, the silver light. Bow to your heart, you are the guru. Listen to your heartbeat, listen to your drumbeat. And from there, spiral upward with the condor. Horpichai, thank you all for being here tonight. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Horpichai. Horpichai, Horpichai, reach out with any questions or answers. Bye. Thank you so much.